Okay, so now we're ready to get started in Photoshop. So the first thing we obviously need to do is create a new document. So I have our new document dialog box already open. And let's name it. We're going to name this one Children Cover. Remember, we're making two versions of the same cover, one for a young child, elementary school age, and the other one for a young adult. I'm going to skip the preset because when I start to make my changes here, that will automatically change to custom. Now most book covers are approximately 9 inches high by 6 inches wide. And I want to make this a little bit larger to allow for a bleed area. And I'll explain that more in a little bit. So I'm going to set mine to 6.5 inches wide by 9.5 inches high. And my resolution, because I plan on printing this and I want a good quality, I'm going to set it to 120. And then my color mode, I'm going to change that to CMYK because my intent is to be able to print this in a four color process. If your intent was to actually create something that was going to go to a professional print shop, then you would want to check with them on your final dimensions and what your plans are so that they understand your bleed area in your trim line. And if they prefer CMYK through your entire process, or if it's okay for you to start in the RGB mode first, so you have more features available to you in Photoshop, and if you can then convert it to CMYK when you're finished with your document. I'm also keeping my resolution a little bit lower at 120. A print shop may ask for a higher number. And this is just to keep our image size small because we are practicing. And you will notice on the bottom right corner of our dialog box, it does give us an image size already with just having a blank document. Okay, I'm gonna click okay. And you can see that we are zoomed out. And the first thing I want to do is turn on my rulers. So I'm going to click on the view menu. And I'm going to point to rulers. And you'll see the rulers come up and they're in inches. That's because when we were working in our dialog box to create the new document, we had that set at inches. So it's going to come up in inches when we open our document. You'll also notice that the top left corner of the document, both vertically and horizontally, both those rulers are marked at zero. So you can see very quickly here that our document is six and a half inches wide and it is nine and a half inches high by looking at our rulers. If you want to change your ruler, the increments that are being shown, you can right click on it and you see here we can actually change it to pixels or centimeters, millimeters, whatever other style that you'd want to work in. Let's go ahead and leave it at inches at this point. And we want to draw a couple of guides. We want to draw a guide on each side of our document a quarter of an inch from the edge to make up for the extra half inch that we added. This is going to create our bleed area and it's going to be our trim marker so that when this is actually printed it would be cut down to six inches by nine inches and this shows us where our edge of our document is at the cut line. This will allow us to actually print to the edge. Many times when you print from a printer the document will come out with a little white margin around it and you can never print to the edge of your document. This will allow us to actually print to the edge because we're going to trim the paper. So what we want to do is trim off a quarter of an inch on each side and create a guide to do that. So I can click on my ruler at the top. As I'm clicking, I hold my mouse down and I can drag and I can bring this down to a quarter of an inch. And you can see on the left hand side, I get a little dotted line on my ruler showing me where my guide is and I also have a tip that's popped up, a screen tip, that's telling me I've got it at 0.25 inches, which is a quarter of an inch. And I want to do this at the bottom margin also. Now remember, when we go all the way down, we're at 9.5, so we want to back up by a quarter of an inch. So it's going to be back to 9.25. Now we can also create guides by actually typing in numbers. We don't have to click and drag off of a ruler. So if we go up to View, you see here we can actually lock our guides, we can clear the guides and start over, or we can create a new guide. So I select New Guide. In this case, I want to do a vertical guide. So I have vertical selected on the orientation. And my first one is easy. It's at 0.25 for a quarter of an inch. And you see that the guide pops up. Now the next one's going to be a little more difficult because my end is six and a half inches. So when I create it, view new guide I actually want to count backwards from six and a half inches so 6.25 would then be my last guide that I'm creating on the right hand margin so now I have my four guides these again are telling me my trim marks 
to show me where I can bleed to. So I can actually have my images go up to that edge and then it'll look like it was printed to the edge. Also, this tells me when I'm creating my layout, I don't want to go over that line for my text because I want all my text to actually print on the cover. I don't want it to be cut off. I'm going to go back up to view and I'm going to go ahead and lock these guides. So now if you'll notice if I click on the guide, I can't move them. If they were not locked, I can click on the guide, see the cursor change, and I can click and drag and readjust my guide. We're going to leave those locked so that as we're working, they don't move on us.